Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to look at the binomial distribution. A binomial distribution is a special probability distribution for discrete random variables. Now, what is meant by a discrete random variable? When an observation of a random variable is made by counting, and the sample space is finite or countably infinite, we say that the random variable is discrete. Let's check out the following examples. The first example, the number of females in a group of five students. The possible values are zero, one, two, three, four, or five. Now, this is an example of countable finite. It means we may have no female at all, or one female only, two females, three females, up to five females. The second example is the number of times we throw a die until a six appears. Now, you can throw the die as many times until a six appears. That's why the possible values are one, two, three to infinity since we don't know exactly the number of times we can throw the die until we get a six. Hence, this is an example of countable infinite. Moving on, now the conditions for a binomial model. The four main conditions for a binomial distribution are the first one, a finite number n trials are carried out. The trials are independent. The outcome of each trial is deemed either a success or failure. The probability P of a successful outcome is the same for each trial. The discrete random variable X is the number of successful outcomes in N trials. If the above conditions are satisfied, X is said to follow a binomial distribution. This is written as X follows bin and P or simply we can write X follows capital B and P. Now, the number of trials and small n and the probability of success P small p are both needed to describe the distribution completely. They are known as the parameters of the binomial distribution. Now, if we represent the probability of success as small p, then probability of failure is going to be 1 minus p, since the sum of all probabilities is equal to 1. Therefore, if we add success plus failure, if we add the probability of success plus probability of failure, it should equal to 1. P plus Q is equal to 1. Therefore, by simple arithmetic, Q is equal to 1 minus P. Hence, from the probability of success, you get the probability of failure. Moving on, if X follows bin and P, the probability of obtaining all successes in N trials is probability of X is equal to R is equal to NCR multiplied by P to the power of R multiplied by Q to the power of N minus R where or can take values 0, 1, 2, 3, up till n. So you will see here, or is 
finite. Where NCR, the formula for NCR is N factorial divided by R factorial multiplied by bracket of N minus R factorial. Now, you can use the formula to compute NCR or simply use a calculator to get the value which I'm going to show you later in this video. Next thing you need to know in a binomial distribution or how to calculate the expectation and the variance of a binomial distribution. The formula for finding the expectation of x is simply NP. You take the number, you multiply by the probability of success. As for the variance, it is NPQ. Here you multiply the number by the probability of success, multiply by the probability of failure. Let us consider this particular example. 30% of pupils in a school travel to school by bus. From a sample of 10 pupils chosen at random, find the probability that, first part, only three travel by bus, the second part, less than half travel by bus. How are we going to tackle this question? How to determine whether it is a binomial model? Well, the first thing to look at in this question is Thirty percent of pupils in a school travel to school by bus. It means you have been given a probability. So it is a probability P, probability of success. Moving on. From a sample of 10 pupils chosen at random, so you have been given a number. So in this question, you have been given what? N and P. So the first thing to do is to define your distribution. We can start by writing, let x be the random variable number of, no, sorry, not number, but simply pupils who travel to school by bus now once you have defined your x we can write the distribution so you have your n n is equal to 10 and p is equal to though you have been given 30 percent it means 30 over 100 which is 0 decimal 3 next we can write x follows bin and p so 10 and then 0 decimal 3 now once you have defined your distribution we can move on to finding the probabilities so the first one we need to calculate only free travel by bus it means we need to calculate the probability of x is equal to 3. So here my R is 3. So using the formula for probability, we're going to proceed as follows. Probability of x is equal to 3 is equal to, look, from the formula it says NCR. What is my N? It is 10 C R, which is Free. Next, P power R. So what is my P here? 0 decimal 3 power R. R is 3. Multiply by 1. Q. Now how to calculate Q? Q is equal to 1 minus 0 decimal 3 which is 0 decimal 7. So we have multiply by 0 decimal 7 to the power of what? 10 minus Three. So we're writing we have 10 C3, 0 decimal 3 power 3, 
zero decimal seven power seven. Now we simply need a calculator to you to find the probabilities. Now this, like I said earlier, we have two ways of calculating this. But first, if you want to do it manually using the formula, so we can do it. So we have NCL, which is N factorial divided by O factorial, N minus O factorial. You simply need to replace the value, uh, the N or by the values. So here we have 10 C free is equal to, it's going to be 10 factorial divided by O factorial. So O is free factorial bracket. Now N minus O, it's going to be 10 minus free factorial. Now what is what is meant by this factorial? Suppose we take free factorial. So what does free factorial means? It means free multiply by 2 multiply by 1. If we take 10 factorial, it's going to be 10 multiply by 9 multiply by 8. It goes on up till multiply by 1. So you may not need to calculate all these manually because you have a calculator to do all that for you. So how to use factorial in a calculator? Let me grab my calculator. So here it is. So we need to calculate this. So 10 factorial. So we need to calculate 10 factorial divided by 3 factorial multiplied by 7 factorial. It's simply you take the 10, you have shift factorial, you divide by open bracket, 3 factorial multiplied by 7 factorial close bracket is equal to 120. So either you take the longer way or you can just use 10c3. So you take it right, 10. So you have here ncr. So 10c3. So you have the same value. So no need to go through the longer method. Okay. So we have, so let me grab another sheet of paper. Is equal to 120 multiplied by 0 decimal 3 power 3 multiplied by 0 decimal 7 power 7. So simply use a calculator again. So I'm going to start backwards. So it's going to be 0 decimal 7 power 7 is equal to multiply by 0 decimal 3 power 3 multiply by 120. So you have 0 decimal 2 6 7 if you are going to give the answer to 3 significant figures. So here you are, the answer for the first part. The second part is less than half travel by bus. So less than half. So we have 10 students. So less than half. It's going to be, no, second part is going to be probability of x less than half. Less than half. So less than five okay so we need to find this probability now what are the values that we're going to take x less than five so if we do a number line so we have five so zero one two three four so what are the values that we're going to take we're going to take zero one two three four now do we need to include the five no because there's only less than five so less than. So the property that we're going to uh, to include are the numbers that we're going to include are property of x is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. It means probability of x is equal to 0 plus probability of x is equal to 1 plus property of x is equal to 2 
plus property of x is equal to 3 plus property of x is equal to 4. Now, we need to compute the probability for each of the or, z, or 0 or 1 or 2 or 3 or 4. So, I'm going to do the first one for you for the first one. Property of x equal to 0 is going to be 10 c 0 0 decimal 3 power 0 multiply by 0 decimal 7 power power 10 plus 10 c 1 0 decimal 3 power 1 0 decimal 7 power 9 now you will see that if we add the two powers we should get n if i take 0 plus 10 i should get 10 if i take 1 plus 9 i should get 10 so let's continue plus 10 c 2 now once we have written all the probabilities we need to calculate each probability at a time so the first one we have 10 c 2 uh, sorry 10 c 0 0 0.3 power 0 and 0 0.7 power 10. Now, I could, uh, from the law of indices, any number of power 0 is 1. So here we simply have 0 decimal 7 power 10. So we have this. So I suggest you write, you take as much as decimal number as you can. So we can take up to 5. So 0, 2, 8, two five because we have after four we have seven so one two three four five so it's going to be five plus second one so i like to work backwards so here we have zero decimal seven power nine multiply by zero decimal three power one it's going to be zero decimal three multiply by ten c one it's going to be again up to five dp we're going to get 0 decimal 1 2 this plus so we're going to continue until we reach to the end once you've calculated all the probabilities you just need to sum all the numbers so summing up we're going to get 0 decimal 84973 so up till 3 this uh, sorry 3 significant case or 3 gp it's going to be 0 decimal 8, 4, 9, 7 is going to be 0, decimal, 8, 5, 0. We have reached the end of this video. I hope you find this video helpful. It's my first ever video on YouTube. I really hope you like it. Thank you for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.